It's heavily raining on a dark night, a kid sitting in a corner, trying to remember who that girl is. She says his eyes are the same as hers. She offers him another world that fits him. He still can't figure out who he is. Three years later, in the kingdom of Winya's Royal Academy of Magic, a bell ring. All the students gather to see a summon on the wall by headmaster Albus called Sable. Oh dim, it's giving Hogwarts vibes. Students were curious about him. He is unrecognized and known as a gloomy, mysterious guy. He has the worst grades in the academy, he is probably called to be expelled. Students find him pitiful as Headmaster Albus is super scary. Sable is on his way to the office when he hears a yelling voice, he stops. A girl is beating the Albus door. She gets frustrated with being ignorant. She asks him why he comes here. He is answerless and tells her that Albus summons him, so he comes here to meet her. She thought this lowest grade student could help her to get into the office, but Sable refused her as she was not invited, which may cause trouble for him. Upon which she gets angry and takes out his stuff Luden, waving in the air and putting on his throat so Albus has no other choice but to come out. A wolf master rushes toward them, takes his sword out, and asks her to release the student. She has lost Krista's, and she will not stop against third-rate servants. They were hand in hand. The wolf asks her to leave. She is a liar and smashes her weapon away. It's impossible for Lost to see this. Sable tries to grip it, but they both shout at him not to touch it. Wolf pushes him and kicks her stuff away, which makes her so angry and miserable. Suddenly they hear the sound of the opening door. Albus comes out. She is stunned to see Lost and how she entered the academy. She winks and replies with cuteness. Oh my god! In the office, Sable is survived by T, but Loss isn't, and she starts arguing with a servant about why she is not served. Albus tells him about a special field program. Sabe is surprised that he is not expelled. It's a special offer for him to improve. She told him about the church and witches' war and asked him if he knew who ended the witch hunts in the kingdom of Weenius. He replies with bright eyes that the main war ended 10 years ago by evil sorcerer 13 and made a new world for them. She added that magic changes the view of witches, and it takes decades to learn magic, but if anyone with talent can learn in a few years, that's how she made this academy to spread magic. But in the south, witches are not considered, so she decides to create a witch village there and wants him to serve as a mage. If he can fit in three years, he will have all the memories of magic. Loss is impressed by Albus's mindfulness. She cheerfully stands to participate in this journey and will offer her 300 years of job experience. Albus refuses her offer as she hires another witch for this purpose. Loss takes out her resignation and tells her she's already kicked her. After all this, she allows her to continue, but no special treatment is given, and she also lets her meet the author of the grimoire. Loss gets so excited to meet her, but Albus tells her she can't recognize her even if she comes close. The next day everyone gathers near Southern Tunnel. Sable and Loss are also there. A girl rushes toward them and introduces herself as Hort. She is a fourth year student. She is also joining them. Pudo, a renowned student, also comes there and arrogantly refuses to join them as Sable is one of the worst students in school. He takes the other two classmates with him. Dude, why being so tough? Hort bad mouths about Kudo, but Sable says he is a beast fallen and it's his right to have a separate group. While the three of them start the journey, Hort freezes she sees a dark vision, but she changes the topic by saying she's hungry. Christus feeds his stuff of Ludens, and if anyone touches it, this can consume their magic and kill them. Now Sable knows why they stop him from touching, but it does not affect Christus because her body and soul are meant for this stuff. Sable takes one of the skewers, Hort tries to stop eating and warns that if he feels pain, he shouldn't blame her. While traveling on the cart, Sable's stomach gets out of order and they need to stop. Sable and Hort resting in the tunnel. She shows him magic, no wonder she's the top student. Sable feels bad that she is stuck with such a loser, but she's optimistic about him. She tells him she practices being nice and smart. Earlier, people didn't treat her well, so she was told if she kept smiling, people would like her. She asks him about his side of the story. Sable tells her he lost his memory before coming to the academy, and if he is expelled, he will also lose his memory of school. Now, he has no other choice but to become a mage. Professor Loss comes to them and inquires what they are up to, whereas Sable tells them he can't cast magic and has no control over his spell, shocking both of them. Loss gets so disappointed, as nothing is more dangerous than an uncontrollable spell. She suggests that it is better if he loses his memory completely and starts life again. How cruel you are, Professor Loss. In the deep dark forest, a spy comes to inform about the witch groups in the village. The witch hunter asks him which group he should finish first. He tells him the lizard beast fallen is stronger. He made fun of the witches and went on chasing them. His mission is never ending war between the church and witches. On the other hand, Sable's group is enjoying their meal. Hort is a big eater, as usually mages are to recover lost magic. 
While they were discussing, two companions of Kudo came to them complaining about how selfish Kudo was. Some thieves were chasing them, and Kudo left them alone and took the map with him. Sable can't believe it. Professor lost deny their blame, something must be cooking, their stuff was not stolen, two of them were not harmed, and only Kudo was missing, which means witch hunters caught him. Kudo only does this to protect his fellows. He also defends Sable from bullying, he is a good guy. Once he told them his only purpose was to protect the academy people, Lost tells them to wait here, and she is going to find him. Sable and Horde also want to go with her, but she refuses as weak mages are a piece of cake for witch hunters. But who can stop them from breaking the rules? They use Professor Lost's handkerchief to locate her, a creepy creature tearing a pile of dead and coming to hunt. People of the village were moving somewhere. Sable and Horde find the chopped tail of Kudo, wordly expecting he is alive or dead. Maybe he can regrow it. Sable sees footprints, and there are three sets of prints. They estimate these are of Kudo, Loss, and Witch Hunters. This means there is only one enemy, who must be so professional. Hort, shivering with fear, holds the tail and asks him to go back. This is one of the professionals hired by the church to hunt witches, known as Arbiter. They don't care how many innocent people may die, they are trained this way. Sable said, but Daya Elnai's organization is gone. Horde aggressively responded that it was not necessary for their people to be gone. Kudo climbed the tree to save his life. Hunters are looking for him. He put himself in danger to save his fellow's life. He noticed ropes that must be a trap. Unfortunately, the tree stem broke, and he fell into the trap. Sharp nails tear his foot. Or tells Sable that she met one of the hunters when she was a kid, went to a nearby village to see her friend, and was horrified to see a heap of dead bodies burning. The hunter stood there and threatened that she would die if she were also a witch. Hort refuses to know any friends and runs to protect herself. If the same hunter hunts Kudo, they can't help him, it's better to go back. Suddenly they hear screams that must be Kudo. She wants to stop him, upon which Sable tells her if her friend were alive. She never leave her alone. Kudo hardly walks, finding a way out, and again he trips by the rope and is caught by the hunters. He's a huge muscular man named Tyrant. It's so easy for him to set a trap for him. He laughed at him, what sort of beast fallen is he? Kudo's magic didn't work on him yesterday. He attacks him with a spell and runs. To his surprise, it doesn't affect him. Tyrant smashes him away with his weapon. Kudo becomes unconscious. Tyrant notices Kudo's foot wound is already recovered. He is a good rat for lab research. Tyrant, you break my heart. He orders to fetch a cage. Meanwhile, Kudo gets a glimpse of his past, sitting behind bars, blaming himself for why it always happens to him. Tyrant dragging through his tail. Kudo thinks he wants to become the strongest to protect everyone, but he can't protect himself. He refuses to take other guidance, so no one will come to save him. He grips the root of the tree. Tyrant brutally chops off his hands, and Kudo grips the root with his mouth. This screwed up, he takes his weapon in the air to smash his skull. Professor Loss flees there with a spark and warns him not to take a step forward. She orders Luden to attack, he manages to save him. He asks her about Luden and how she can pick it. Loss tells him this stuff has chosen her for 300 years, and she is a teacher in a witch academy. If he has courage, then face her. Tyron strikes his weapon on the tree, but nothing happens. She releases his spell, which cuts the trees in half. He rocked girl. Sadly, Sable and Horde also reach there, and Loss screams to flee away. But Tyron hurriedly cash this moment and grabs Sable by his neck. The moment Horde sees in his eye, she remembers the same person who killed her friend. Loss asks him to release the boy otherwise, his life is also in danger. Tyron tied her his grip and offered to throw her stuff away so that he would release the boy. She rejects his offer. Tyron keeps his pressure, Sable is on this last breath. Professor Loss gives up her stuff. Hort stands and tells her not to think about them, just kill the hunter. Tyron orders them to stay away. He takes off his special cape and covers the stuff with it, which vanishes its effect. He orders Sable to take it. Tyron calls Horde and exposes her true identity. She is sent to the academy to spy on witches. She screams out. She was called the child of a demon because she started growing horns. Her mother told her to always put a smile on her face. They cut her horns so everyone will love her. Church gives her the task of being the best mage and never getting discovered. However, she works hard to get the highest grades. She really wants to become a mage. She doesn't want to graduate. When Elvis tells her about the field program, she accepts happily, but on the departure day, she had bad feelings. She has no idea which hunters show up. She doesn't want to betray everyone, so she adds poison to her food, but Sable eats it. She never thought Tyra would come here. 
Hort is on her knees with heavy eyes, thinking it's her fault she put everyone in danger. With a bright smile, Sable says it's not her fault. Hort can't believe how he put this smile, he thinks she is a traitor. She takes Kudo's tail out of the bag and spells the magic of the final verses. Tyrant hurriedly covered himself with his cape and disposed of the spell. She's stunned to see the spell did not affect him. Tyrant calls her a betrayer and comes toward to kill her. Luden stuff provokes Sable to use him. Professor Law stops him not to touch it, but he releases the magic and it gathers everyone like a nest. Sable gets unconscious and when he opens his eyes, Hort hugs him tightly. Nice. Miraculously, they all are alive. Loss gets angry with Sable. If he really wants to die, she can kill him now. Using which it or stuff means suicide. She gets angry at everyone for not listening to her, the wrong use of magic. Ultimately, she steals Luden for one day for calling Sable, not her. Moving on, Sable asks Loss how he is still alive. She replies his magic is infinite and that Luden can't exceed further. So, Sable only needs to control his magic. She also asks Kudo to come with them, and he tries to negotiate, but Professor Loss finds her way. Kudo wants to find his tail. Meanwhile, Hort smiles and says she uses it for spell offerings, which makes him furious. Sable is viewing Starry Night. Hort comes to with a hot cup of milk. She asks him if he thinks she is a betrayer. Sable refuses. She is afraid of why they all are so nice to her. He's not nice, he is unconcerned about others. She takes off his hat and asks him to feel her horn, being a demon child. She is told to serve the church to cleanse her soul. But after studying in the academy, she thinks she is a beast fallen. If beast fallen and worries both die, they enter the witch's bottle line, then half human and half beast babies are born. With time, the witch's soul gets weaker and becomes more human. She is thankful to Lost. she tells her she's beast fallen and even thankful for him for not speaking ill about them. She kissed him and went to sleep. Out of nowhere, Professor Lost jumps into him and tells him to take a step, which he says he never understands stuff like love. She laughed at him. This will be fun to see the three of them having a tough time. The next morning, two guys from Kudo's group were kicked out of the league for leaking information to the church. Now, only four left to plan the journey, Lost said it would be hard for Kudo to work without hands. They should regenerate them. But Kudo gets offended to stop saying this. Loss asks if he hasn't studied the healing magic. The fourth chapter of the book Grimoire of Zero is for protection and healing. She amazed everyone with her knowledge, but Kudo refused to use magic as it was so dense that he would run out of magic even before his fingers form. Loss gives an idea, how about using Sable's magic? They agreed now she inquires who is good at the chapter of protection. Sable pointed to Kudo, well, he thinks he is good at hunting, but people make fun of his hunting skill. For regeneration, Loss tells them to touch some sensitive areas to feel the flow, like a kiss. <laughs> boy. Oh no, I can't see this. Three of them hold the hand, and Sable starts his magic. Kudo recites the verse of healing. Gradually his body starts generating paws and a tail. After seeing this, everyone cherishes them a lot, and they sing for mages. Now it's time to start a new journey. While walking in the city, Sable hits the cart. Unfortunately, all the clay is on him. Lost knows a good bath nearby, and they go there. It's an incredible bath. Sable asks Kudo his reason for joining mages. He tells him he wants to join the church and mages army. The knights of this army only protect the church and its people, and they don't like Beast Fallen. He is not strong enough, so becoming is the best shot of him. Sable asks him why he wants to join the army. He says he wants to be like the Dragon Conqueror King. When the witch disaster burns his town, he is in the cage where the Dragon King comes to save his life with a smile and make peace among the witches. That's an impressive story. He asks Sable why he joined the academy. He is mumbling over the top Professor Loss comes to their bath naked, which makes them so embarrassed What? that they run out of the bath well on the door they hit by Hort. Oh god, what a shame. The escort gets so smooth village locals treat them very well because they all know Professor Loss. They really enjoy lakes and camping, and she also teaches them hunting methods. Helping needly people and learning to use magic, Sable thinks in three years of the academy, he never felt such safeguarded. It's all because of Loss. Hort hugs her as she is warm like a mother. Pudo asks Loss what she will do after this escort. She says she will meet Mud Black Witch, the author of the Grimoire book. They didn't understand the point of the meeting. She tells them living 300 years makes her bored of eating, sleeping, or taking a breath. 
She is not interested in offspring or love and romance. There's only one thing left that excites her. Hort replies, is it fun? She cherishes and tells them she only seeks new experiences and dangers. The things the world fears make her heart dance. It's hard for her to stay normal. Sable says he still thinks he is a kind person. Well, this thing makes Lost blush. She is happy with their company. A kid ran toward them, asking them to hide. They shouldn't come to this place. They enter the cave, and the kid seals its entrance with magic. Lost is amazed to see the kid's magic skills. He quite her as a barrier that doesn't block sound. A giant beast comes chasing the kid, calling him to come out if he wants to stay alive, and gets close to the cave because it hears heartbeats. It smashes the barrier, and they all jump out of the cave. Pluto thinks they can handle it with magic, but it's not easy. Professor Lost tries to smash him, but he blocks her strike. She asks them to run. Beast put his sword down. He didn't want to fight. He knew he couldn't win. He wants the kid to return to the village, and his task is about to be done. The kid runs to hug his father. He tells him these people save his life, and they call themselves mages. The priest questions if the three are from the field program. Sable is surprised he knows about them. He only adds that residents of the target village know about the participants. His reflexive response insults them as no brain idiots, but apologizes since he hates witches from the core. Laos tells the priest he was saved by the three. He calls it reckless behavior from them to face the beast fallen mercenary head on since it's the witch's henchmen. Two years ago, the village changed ownership. The student's supervisor abandoned it and handed it over to an invader. Many questions fill their minds, but Sable deduces that only the problematic students from the academy have been sent here. Holt thinks that the academy wants to get rid of them. They think of returning to the academy to complain but risk getting expelled. The priest tells them that not doing their duties might cause them some trouble too. Pluto suggests notifying the church and mage army to defeat that witch. The priest reminds him the army would not bother in the slightest for a mere witch village. Lost pops out of nowhere and tells them to be skeptical as there's always more to offer than what meets the eye. She asks if the priest is in league with the enemy or something worse. Although the short solution would be to kill the suspects, Lost believes in careful scrutiny before proceeding. Thus, she asks the priest to show around the village. The group heads to the village, and Ols finally unites with his son. The priest further introduces the three kids as Leo's protectors and as the field program students. Ols thanks the kids for protecting Leo's. The priest tells Ols that the students suspect him of siding with the witch. Ols does agree that he looks fishy. Ols tells the students to rest for the night at least. Leo's and Ols show them around, and Leo shows them the school. He is also well liked in the village because of the witch's charm. Pluto questions her greatness if, in the end, she abandoned the village, how can she be revealed? Revered. The village is also rather quiet due to outsiders coming here. Oles finally brings them to their eerie looking house. Dolls hang outside for each person who resides here since their sight stops the people from running from the village. They go inside and inspect the house. After some while, Loss decides to kill the witch and Albus for ditching all four of them here. Loss is completely infuriated at this action of Albus. The three look at a jolly, laughing Loss and don't join her, which demoralizes her. She feels dread and his kids these days are not even enthusiastic anymore. Holt suggests returning to Wienias and getting the church and mage army to help them, but Sable adds this will make the village a battlefield. Sable is confused about the morality of these actions, so he tells them to take things into their own hands. Pluto stops him by saying that he's making them fight a battle already lost, and he will aimlessly die. Holt tries to calm Pluto down but to no avail. Sable mentions it is not worth getting expelled on top of that, their memories will be erased too. And since he has touched Ludens once, he is not afraid of death either. Holt fears these thoughts, so Sable apologizes and agrees with her words. He asks Kudo and Holt to leave the village if they're scared. Holt tears up just because she does not want Sable to die. Sable being the dumbass he is, doesn't understand her feelings. Holt runs away, so he chases her to apologize without understanding why. Loss explains that low self-regard can hurt your loved ones. Kudo summarizes that she cares for him, and that's why she cried, as they are friends at the end of the day. Sable also does not want Holt to die either. Holt is in the church, questioning her status as a mage. Holt apologizes to Lily for interrupting her cleaning session. Holt questions Lily's attire as it is not raining. Lily asks Holt why she's sad, so she mentions her fight with Sable. Holt asks Lily if she loves the priest. The priest shows up behind them at that moment. Pluto asks Loss if they have a shot at winning against the witch. Pluto looks away in amusement. The priest sends Lily out. Holt asks the priest not to scold Lily as she only consoles Holt. 
He reminds Holt she isn't in a position to worry about others. He asks if she fought with her friend, so she thinks it might be her fault for not understanding. The priest stops her as she's venturing carelessly into a witch-controlled village. He mentions that she betrayed the church after four years at the Mage Academy, which justifies her actions of treachery. She is tied up in a thread's wound by the priest. Holt cries for help, but he sticks a sickle on her throat to shut her up. Back at home, the three are tensed about Holt missing, so they track her through her magic trail. They end up in a cave and enter inside. Loss immediately stops midway as she finds blood on the floor. From this point onwards, the traces don't belong to Holt alone. Loss decides to move forward, as she mentions the witch is inviting them inside. Kudo thinks she's gone lunatic and will get them killed. She only tells Kudo that the Mage Knights, the profession he strives to become, don't fear anything as their symbol is of the Dragon Conqueror King himself. Fearing for his life, Kudo runs outside with his tail between his legs, citing that he's weak and won't run towards his death like this. Kudo is confronted by Yaoi outside. He wants Kudo to join him and change factions. Sable tries to light up the cave like Kudo. He gets it on the second try. Yaoi lures Kudo that he will get him into the army and a blood contract with the witch if he agrees to his terms. He asks about hold from Yaoi. Yaoi mentions that he ate her, and the damsel's meat was tender. Kudo gets angry and threatens to fight Yaoi for his crime. Loss and Sable move forward, with her telling Sable he's an easy target for witches due to his magic reservoir. But he shows his resolve to save her as their friend. Sable promises would also save Loss if she were in the same condition. Suddenly, Loss feels a door opening, and a vine pulls Sable away. The priest shows up from behind and pushes Loss into the same room, leaving her without Ludens. They're locked inside, and the priest mentions they should have killed him when they had the chance. Suddenly, the floor lights up, and a white-haired witch shows herself to the duo. She catapults Loss with a finger flick and throws Holt's bloodied hat towards Sable. Sable remembers this woman being the same person he met three years ago in the rain. The white-haired woman calls Sable towards him as she has been waiting for him. Sable does not understand what is happening, so he asks for her identity. Loss walks forward, telling him to stay calm as witch's eyes hold magical powers. The white-haired woman tells Loss she is in the way, so she casts a spell to throw her away as she falls beside Sable. The white-haired witch starts addressing that Loss is just a pretender who calls herself a witch while being unable to properly use magic. This displeases her. She further tells Sable that he is exceptional and leagues better than Loss. With this said, she throws a bloodied cap that belongs to Holt. Sable is curious about her fate, so the witch tells him that her mercenary had his way with her. The witch herself has gone to great lengths to make Sable her own, including taking over this village. Sable starts overthinking that everything happened, good and bad, because of him. The witch declares that only she will love, guide, and protect Sable. Sable asks why the people with him are not befitting for him. Professor Loss cast away her precious staff to protect her students and also taught them everything they needed to know. Although the white-haired witch is his only memory, that one memory is the one he can do most without. But Sable only says she is not worthy of his care and attention. If he somehow manages to put his energy into a spell, he might be able to save Professor Loss. Unexpectedly, as he chants the spell, Loss gets up from her arms and kisses Sable. Once done, Loss gets up. Her entire body is surging with magical energy from Sable's body. She then scolds Sable for his reckless behavior. The white-haired witch warns her that even after receiving power from him, she can still use magic faster than her. That said, Loss casts a spell and fires it at the witch. Sable is shocked at this as Loss imitates the spell she just used by her. She fires the chapter of hunting, final verse, flog is towards the witch. The witch instantly nullifies her magic, leaving the duo astonished as she owns that spell, and it cannot be used against her. The magic Loss uses began from the Grimoire of Zero, and she is the author of the Grimoire. Sable remembers that the headmaster was referring to the witch. The mud black witch inches closer as she casts a spell. To their surprise, she does not hurt Sable. She further tells him that she will also supervise the field program. She tells Sable that she is the author of the Grimoire, and so she welcomes him. Loss is all jolly after witnessing that amazing magic denial. She tells Sable that it is a test and he passed it. Holt comes towards them, congratulating Sable, and hugs him. Holt tells him that he would have been expelled if he had joined the Zero. Similarly, the father tested her by trying to keep her as an informant. The father shows up and whacks her on the head. Loss also receives Ludens back. Loss also realized earlier that they were being tested. The father thinks that the leaves are too much as accessories. Kudo shows up with a mercenary as he passes the test too. 
claiming that the mercenary ate Holt, but the mercenary directs the allegations towards the father. The father only says that such a script is important to invoke emotions. The Mud Black Witch also apologizes for the insults, Wasp mocks her by using those same insults. Back at the academy, the headmaster is joyous over receiving a letter. She is happy over the successful completion of the test for the three students, as informed by Zero, unlike last year, where everyone failed. At the village, everyone raises a toast towards the successful students. Zero tells the students that although they sought ways to expel them, they still emerged victorious. Holt is curious about the academy expelling them, so Zero answers that their potential is too great. So, if they fail, they will be immediately expelled to protect everyone. Although the initial two showed signs of treachery, these three might lead to more significant disasters if they deviate. Zero then calls Holt equal to the Mooncaller Witch, the headmaster of the academy. Pudo, with his merit for resourcefulness and talent for the chapter of protection, will lead him to become known as the Immortal Mage. Sable and his endless magic virtue will give him centuries to live as he can sharpen his skills all he wants. Zero herself is staggered at the thought of his talent as he will become the most known mage around. Zero even knows the type of lazy mages they will become if they slouch around. Now, Zero tells them that for the field programs, each of the three will have a store so that they are easily accessible by the villagers. Zero herself operates a poultry shop in the town. Yaohei and the father interrupt, telling everyone to eat up. Pudo is scared if they are being offered human meat, for which only the father is to be blamed for the horrendous script as he used to be an arbiter for the Diagnes. The priest tells her that she is 20 years old, does not like huge gatherings, and has a timid personality. Sable then asks Zero whether she took him to the academy, as he does not remember. She only tells him that he will remember when he needs to. While talking about Lus, who is at Zero's paltry shop to read her books, suddenly Kudo feels something odd and tells everyone to look above. The dragon lands in the village, and its rider it, the dragon conqueror king, asks for the three. Zero and Yaoi come and meet him too. The letter states that they can use magic without restrictions, even though they have not graduated. Pudo instantly rushes in and asks Heath if he remembers him, and he surely does remember him from the freak circus. Sable only assures her that it will come again. Zero asks her if she is not going. As Lost does not wish for Zero to harm her students, since her magic is depleted gravely, Sable is the perfect person for her to have. Zero admits that Lost is right, but she reveals that he was attacked by a witch earlier, and his mother was killed before his eyes, and the witch seeking him died from magical overload. Loss asks her why she controls him like this, so Zero reveals that Sable is her nephew. Leading to the evil magician, Thirteen being his father, the one who stole the grimoire of Zero to make a world of witches. Old takes a variety of jobs as the hand image. Pudo is using his healing magic to work as an assistant at a clinic. Sable runs a magic shop out of their residence to supply magic to those in need. Old again seeks his magical services, as she cannot have enough of it, just like a kid asking for candy. Pudo goes through the same procedure as her and feels gross about it. Hold and Kudo leave for work while Sable stays back, thinking about how he has settled here. Loss walks in with a basket of bread and greets Sable after that. He tells Loss about settling here, although he has never left the house. Loss aggressively confronts him as he cannot get used to the village this way. But he needs to be here in the house in case someone's magic is depleted. Plus, he has to do cleaning and laundry. Out of his cleaning senses, he started doing Holt's laundry too. She feared him and started hiding her underwear under her bed. But Sable still found it and cleaned it anyway. Loss scolds him that she is obviously hiding her underwear from him, as a hardworking damsel like her will not want a boy to clean her undergarments. Considering how he labels the stains on her underwear, he will sound like a pervert in the village if anyone knows about him washing her clothes like this. Loss grabs her head in frustration as he claims to mention this fact to Holt. She then asks Sable if Holt likes him. Although he does not know, Loss admits that she indeed does. Due to his cluelessness, Loss might just bang her head against a wall now. Loss tells him that people present themselves respectfully before those they like. Sable feels like what he does is like a job, and not doing it makes him uneasy. Loss remembers what Zero said regarding his self-slavery. Loss stands on the table and hugs him on the head. But with the house chores, he cannot study as supporting Hold and Kudo seems more productive. Now Loss runs out of tea leaves, so she orders him to bring them. Although he is hesitant but after some manipulation by Loss, he decides to bring them. He then thinks about how doing house chores lets him stay home, but Loss stated that he never wants to leave the house and constantly does chores. As he walks out, he is met by Leos. He guides Sable through the jungle and leads him to the tea leaves. Seeing the path ahead, Sable says it is better to turn back. 
so Leos goes on his own to pick the leaves. Leos climbs a tree and asks if Sable is mad at him, as he lied and now has forgotten the way back. Sable takes the blame for being tricked and will take the scolding from Leo's father instead. As he comforts Leo's, a mouse grabs his trousers. It is Leo's friend, Lily, who comes here to guide them back. Many mice join in, leading the two back to the village before the church. There, Leo sees his mom. She grabs him angrily like a toothpick and carries him away. The priest meets Sable with an ominous oar and invites him inside to rest and have a meal. The priest mocks him as he has not visited that many places due to his shut in nature. Lily shows up while hiding her face. To not startle Sable. She asks for her shroud back but only receives an order to cook food for Sable. Sable does not understand his questions. He asks Lily if she cooks, and she agrees. He asks the same to the priest. Lily says that his cooking is terrible. Even Gordon Ramsay will puke at his dishes. Sable receives a meal with soup, bread, and honey. Earlier, he was walking into the bee territory with Leos from where the honey originated. He warns Sable that the forest is dangerous since there are wolves at night too. Sable looks down. Lily cheers him up, saying that the father is short-tempered. Sable then tells the priest he entered the forest to find tea leaves. He mocks Sable that he did not even bother finding the leaves location and went in. But these leaves grow next to Zero's house, and staying indoors, always waiting for Zero to pass the tests, will not lead him anywhere. He leaves the church, and Holt meets him curiously since he never leaves the shop. Sable sees bloodstains on her sleeve. Holt says she went out with Yaohei in the forest, but the wolves attack them. And now Yaohei wants Lily to take care of the bar. Lily tells Holt that he is strong and got hit on purpose, but Holt was scolded for doing magic she could not finish. Lily consoles her. Lost shows up, not expecting Holt and Sable to meet outside. She informs him of a job as a magic supplier. Lost brings Sable to Zero, sitting beside a gravely injured Yaohei. Zero kisses Sable to begin the power transfer. Even in this situation, Yaohei gets jealous of the kiss like a young girl. Sable asks if Holt will be expelled since Yaohei got mad at her. Sable remembers the Leo's incident. Before leaving, he asks Zero to share the tea leaves with Loss. Yaohei, Loss, and Zero discuss his behavior as a shut-in. Since he is only doing house chores and supplying magic, Due to the other two growing, Loss wants to end this reclusive behavior, so she gives him the tea leaves task. Zero says that everyone grows at different rates. Yaoi only mentions that he is doing enough supplying magic. Loss throws a tantrum like a toddler because she wants the three to develop into elite mages, and Sable is not doing that. What if Sable does not learn magic and only works as a magic supplier? Yaoi only wants him to follow his free will. At the academy, Albus shows suspicion over Holdem inspecting the village. She knows that he has a soft spot for Sable. However, he will not try Sable for the crimes of his father, whom he has never met. At Zero's house, Loss asks why Yaohei has his clothes here, to which she replies that he sometimes stays over. Loss instantly ships the two of them. Zero said not to use a family member to obtain magic regarding the recent magic transferal, but his job is to supply, so she should not feel bad. However, if she asks him to give all his magic, it will count as exploitation, and there is no guarantee regarding his magical limit. But if Zero does not receive magic, she will wilt and die. Holdem is traveling in a carriage, and with him is the Arbiter who attacked the three, asking for his next task from the Wolf Beast Fallen. Back at the village, Sable asks Leos to play in the town the next day. At midnight, Kudo wakes up asking for his next patient. Back at the site, he remembers treating all the patients who cannot afford the medicine and are affected by the contagious disease with his magic. He goes downstairs only to be told by Holt that he fainted midway while treating the patients due to magic depletion. Hearing this, Kudo instantly asks if Yaohei died. This opens old wounds for Holt because she injured him earlier. She admits her fault regarding the incident, and Kudo instantly barges in to blame her for his murder. Holt only hits back at him by calling him an edge lizard with magic deficiency. They start fighting like grade schoolers as he jokingly talks about killing her. Loss tells them to shut up whatever they're spewing about killing each other. Loss asks how they will face their mistakes. Holt decides not to use magic in combat until she is fully proficient. Kudo will only use magic for emergencies and consult his boss first. Lost taunts him that he needs to work before blabbering mighty words, and Sable plans to play with Leos in the forest. Loss orders him to collect medicinal herbs from there to double it as an herbology lesson. Kudo thinks Sable is being let off easy, and instantly the weighted hold jumps on Kudo's back like a horse ride. Loss also tells them to see Zero tomorrow and take a day off. Kudo finally falls on the floor from her weight. Just like a mom, Loss waves the three goodbyes before they venture off to work. Holt talks about how Loss is like a mother, strict and kind. At Zero's house, Sable appreciates her book collection. She tells them the Forbidden Library, albeit hidden on maps, is in the Nidora Fort in the north. 
It houses books forbidden by the church. Hold is excited with Sable to visit it, but Kudo instantly rejects it as the place is full of remnants of disaster. Visiting there will spell either agony or death. Sable changes his mind, but Holt still insists as she is the sword and Kudo is the group's healer, with Sable being the magic supply. Kudo taunts both as the Holt targets her own teammates while the healer faints mid-heal. Zero has a special lesson for Holt for her problem. She will not be released until she can cancel Zero's spells. She apologizes while Zero takes her away for practice. Meanwhile, a book catches Sable's eye. Hold and Zero are practicing magic together, and although Zero is unfazed, Hold is improving. She recommends Hold to light her candles with Flogges as exercise. She whines about not having enough magical power, to which Zero only flexes her powers. But with that, Zero loses consciousness and faints to the ground. Sable tries to transfer magic through hands but fails. He suggests transferring it through lips, and Hold and Kudo blush, but Zero rejects it saying that eating food will make her better. She faints again, but Sable picks her up. He asks the two to bring some food from Yaohei. Meanwhile, he carries Zero inside. Zero tells him not to worry and nonchalantly tells him to stab her with a knife. He might hesitate to do it like most people. She tells Sable that she can fully rob his energy if needed. Sable instantly notices that their eye color matches. She denies telling him anything but instead mentions his father. Then, he points toward the book Sable picked. He wanted a book about medicinal herbs, so he chose it. Even after the terrible penmanship, Sable understands the written text. She mentions that witches use tricks not to let people read their books. She tells him the author is Sable's father. Sable mentions he is nothing like him. Sable describing the book as easy to understand will lead him to uncover its secrets soon. Yaoi finally appears. He is short of breath. Zero explains every movement of his before he enters the room. Yaoi thanks Sable for staying with her, but he apologizes for being unable to transfer magic to her. Zero cuts Yaoi off to address something. In the forest, Leos and Sable are looking for a red flower to search for tea leaves. Leos mentions Sable has grown up since he can rid, so he tells him to study too so that he can rid soon too. Sable thinks over Zero, asking him whether he wants to be a magic supplier or a mage, and he does not need to learn if he does not want to be a mage. The two witness a carcass probably attacked by wolves, with Sable claiming he cannot protect them against wolves. They finally reach the red flower fields, and both of them rejoice. Leos asks him about their next adventure together, while Sable needs to practice magic alone. This makes Leos downspirited, so Sable asks him to accompany him in the practice. Leos is happy again, and he claims to marry him one day. Sable suddenly feels an ominous aura, and from within the forest, a spiked ball appears and shoots thorns at them. They hit Sable in multiple spots while Leos is impaled in the abdomen by one, and blood is coming out. Sable instantly grabs the weakened Leos and tells him to hold on. He does not risk using his unstable healing spell on Leos, so he carries the child back to the village. Leos loses consciousness midway. Sable only cries for not practicing healing spells. He calls out Luz for help. A black bird visits and tells him to run, telling him Zero is on the way. He starts walking towards the destination. Yaohei and Zero finally reach him, but they tell him that he protected Leos successfully. Loss enters the forest as well. Both Leos and Sable are suffering from blood loss, so Zero tells Loss to give her blood. Zero casts a spell and finally heals them. Ironically, like apprentices, Zero and Loss collapse from magic deficiency and blood loss, respectively, and they taunt others for the same issues. Zero took too much blood from Loss and saw stars in daylight. Sable is still crying over this while Holt cheers him up. In the town, Leos boasts that Sable fought a monster, but he makes himself the story's hero, although he was the real Zero here. Loss mentions that she read about it in the Forbidden Library, where the creature disguises itself as a dead animal and then lures prey. It is labeled Touch Me Not, a demonic invention to torment and kill humans. Yale proceeds to meet the priest. He meets Holdem as he is leaving. In the church, Holdem tells Yaohei about people selling remnants of disaster. Holdem thinks it is nonsense, but now he might believe it. He takes Lily with him to find the culprit. They have to leave the village to find them, although she is a bit hesitant to leave. Her friends are scared of the creature that attacks Sable. Yaohei says it is also his fault for not checking out these unnatural phenomena in the forest. Yaohei leaves to inform the neighboring village. Holden taunts him for this village's weak defense, but Yaohei only calls him incompetent as it is not an outsider's business to interfere. So, if Holden is supposedly competitive, Yaohei leaves the two witches' protection in his care as Yaohei and the priest leave the village. Suddenly Zero shows up as she will tag along and protect them even after all that magic depletion she faced. Holden mentions that Beast Fallen are meant to work with witches. Holden tells the three students that he is here to inspect the village. 
He gets angry over them and makes them run away. A bedridden loss asks why he is here. If he hypothetically uses a remnant, the village will fall. He asks Loss if she can handle this problem since she is the only witch's master Sorna relies upon. But Sorna died protecting her people and asked Loss to protect them, too, as this village is her dream. The compensation for her work will be access to the Grimoire of Zero. As promised by Hold'em, Sable tells the two he wants to become stronger as a mage. This instantly makes Hold go over her past underwear trauma. Loss walks out and tells the three to go back. Meanwhile, Holden destroys a blood-filled capsule, which drops the shackles of the Arbiter hidden in the forest. Sable asks them to teach him how to cast magic while he replenishes their magic in return. It is only natural if he asks for something in return. Hold admits that they relied on him too much. But again, like a little girl having a crush, she blushes and hesitantly asks if he might have to transfer magic through kissing. He denies which makes Hold go loose in a fake laugh, expressing her artificial joy. She asks if Sable would kiss a female, to which he agrees. Hold interrupts as she won't let this supposed Sabina kiss other men like Sable. Holdem asks Holt for an empty house to stay. Holt takes Sable away to tell him to stay away from Leos, although the incident is not his fault. So, he asks Holt if he can take him out once he is stronger. Holt agrees and will teach Leos about the forest by then too. Suddenly, the muscular arbiter pops up behind Sable, puts a sleeper hold on Sable and kidnaps him. His horse carriage runs through the forest with Sable tied up. He has a flashback of his mother warning him never to approach a witch with eyes like him. The witch walks in with an axe and threatens Sable to come out if he doesn't want his mother dead. He instantly emerges from his barrier, and the next moment, the witch chops his mother's head off right in front of him. The sensation of his magic is nice to her, but Sable sends way more magical power her way, and she dies painfully on the spot. The Arbiter takes off Sable's mask, slaps a crying Sable, apologizing as his orders are to take him alive. He asks if he is being abducted, but the Arbiter shuns this off as he is just a tool to get the job done. Hold and Kudo catch up to them after trying to ride the horses somehow, although they are failures at it for sure. But they reach Sable. The Arbiter picks up his weapon, as they don't have loss with them today. In the forest, Loss is cleaning up the thorns as a task to read the Grimoire of Zero in return. But she finds a young man stunned by bees some distance away, asking for help. Pudo cuts his tail off for Holt to use as a sacrifice. She does a flog as incantation. Although Tyrant deflects, it still burns off Sable's ropes. Sable gets out and grabs the Arbiter, saying he will kill him if he moves. While carrying that injured man back, Loss finds Holdem and Ols passed out. He recalls that Ols told the group that Sable had been abducted. The two kids decided to go, and although he tried to stop them, he and Ols were put to sleep by magic. He realizes that his plan backfired as Loss pinpoints that he wanted to cause an incident to test the group. Although he does not want to do Sable any harm, Loss states that Sorna would disagree to all this. Holdem is tense as he uses Tyrant for this test, but he might go over the top. Loss is flustered over this news. Tyrant beats up Sable and crushes his hands with one blow of his hammer. He similarly beats the other two. He only says that strike when you have the chance to kill. The priest appears as Lily informs him about an outsider coming here. He wants to take Tyrant and Alive to reveal information. He repeats the same lines that Tyrant said to Sable and makes a mockery of him. Zero and Yaohei show up at the site too. Loss and Hold'em show up too, calling them shameful to bully Tyrant. Hold'em impulsively says that Tyrant took out all three students. Zero is angry at Hold'em, depending on his answers, she might send his head to Albus. Hold'em tells everyone that Tyrant would be spared his death penalty if he could bring one student to the academy, as this was a test for the village defense. But the students were wary of the suspicious Hold'em from the start. So, while saving Sable, they took Hold'em out of the equation, and he couldn't restrict Tyrant's violence. Zero only agrees that if he had intentions of murder, the three would have been killed because the village defense is weak. Yale says it is because they are short on people due to the remnant of disaster. They agree that they must also protect the other villages, which is why they lack fighting power. Zero says there is no use if witches bring more dangers than benefits. Hold'em wants to speak but is shut up by the priest and Yaohe. Zero lets him speak, so he adds that they can use Tyrant in the added manpower. Tyrant denies it, but since he failed his task, he has no choice but to agree. Hold'em only imposes it further on him. Hold is against this, as someone who betrayed the church can betray them too. He tried to kill them so she would not forgive him. Zero says that she is not wrong if they want revenge. People see the witches as villains since they killed their loved ones, so the anti-witch faction hires people like Tyrant. 
Even though he has killed many people, he is protecting the village to atone for his sins. The priest says that he is the same, too, as he killed anyone the church ordered him to, so he is also worthy of the death penalty this way. Lily barges in as they cannot just kill the priest off. Loss has also killed many witches with Ludens as well. Kudo admits that she is biased and anyone Holt likes just does not turn into a good power even though they have killed people. Kudo is fine with Tyrant as an ally. They can kill him if he changes sides. Holt still shows her suspicions and is scared that Sable will get killed. Sable apologizes for not being reliable. Out of frustration, Kudo says to execute him and have some quiet. Holt finally agrees to monitor him along with Yaohei, and he will stay at the bar. Loss cheers her up that she finally made an unbiased decision to let him live. Holt hugs Loss and starts crying. Holdem is leaving the village, asking Loss to come with him too. He says that time really flies for her, and Loss admits jokingly that Holdem has grown old after the last encounter. Loving manners might lead to people liking him and having a positive image. Harful mentions he can't build relationships by killing. In reply to Holt's scolding, Tyrant only mentions that protecting and killing are the same thing. So, considering his job to protect, Hearthful shows him around the village as he needs to learn about it. Hearthful tells him that he will gain nothing this way, and he proceeds to strangle Hearthful, only to for Ludens to be placed on his neck. Loss tells him not to do it again. Hearthful says that she did it to confirm whether she would be scared. Yali wanted to get some information out of the assailant through torture, but he drops the plan since it's a kid. Pudo interferes, saying that it's wrong to torture anyone. He adds that they will send him to Winias once he is stable. Holt praises him as the dim-witted Kudo sounds smart for once. Here, a torture-less interrogation means it's a job for the priest. The priest enters the room and throws a staff at Holt, which he deflects. He finds that the boy is awake. The boy gets up and prepares to head, but the priest... The priest refers to him as a heretic who doesn't know the pure aims of the church. The kid calls everyone, old eavesdrops on them, saying they're not letting students interfere as much, considering they can fight too. She stops by the school only to find out the monstrous tyrant is playing with children and teaching them how to make traps, as explained by Hearthful. Although he tries to scare Hearthful but he likes to play around like a little kid too. Leo shows his trap to tyrant, and they plan to go to the river tomorrow. Holt has an unsightly flashback of Tyrant with a pile of corpses, while Hearthful asks Holt he's allowed to go, which she affirms since he's her servant. Holt tells him to quiet down, as he does not intend to kill the children as per Leo's question. Holt sighs in relief. He asks Hearthful what she is teaching the children that they don't fear him, to which she replies that none will fear him in this village. Pudo receives a message from a mouse that the transfer is postponed, so he asks the assailant boy to accompany him. The boy and Kudo walk out of the village. He asks Kudo why isn't he dead yet since he is fated to die here. Pudo grabs him by the collar and says he should go down in history with good deeds, unlike the twisted morals he is taught. But he is taught to kill witches and beast fallen. Pudo leaves his collar and tells him to follow him. They eat lunch together, and the boy finds the food made by Lily delicious. His inner gourmet wakes up and cannot decide which dish is the best when asked. Pudo appreciates the soup but criticizes the bitter sauce and imitates the priest perfectly if he had tasted the sauce. They tell the boy to stay quiet about Lily practicing cooking for the priest. He asks them why he is sitting here. Pudo says to taste the food made by a beast fallen with a beast fallen. She tells him to puke the food out if he's gross from her looks, but he disagrees. They leave the house, and the boy thanks Lily, telling her not to apologize for her looks. She's happy about this. The two return and Kudo tells him it's useless to escape and that he should sleep. They exchange names, and his name is Cody. Pudo leaves the room in a cartoonish manner. Katie is finally content with some things and cries over the church's lies to him. Sable finally shows the first magic incantation he learned from Zero to others. They're fascinated by him manipulating these shapes. Pudo and Holt try to imitate him. They find it hard to control. Sable asks Loss for help in an experiment, as he needs Ludens to do it instead of people. He also expresses his emotions, that he likes Loss. Loss loses control and falls to the ground, trying not to blush like a middle school girl. <laughs> She tries to shove off his love by showing it as something platonic. He only worsens everything, as he wants to marry her and wants to be her mate as if they're animals. He is taking his shots in the chillest way possible. Pudo and Holt only look at whatever nonsense he's spewing. Holt interferes, saying that he cannot force his love like this, as everything he said is a bit too sudden. After causing all the damage, he asks Loss to forget everything, but she can't do it now. Katie remembers a fight at the church where witches are being denounced as uncompassionate and bringers of destruction, since they destroyed families. 
He is brainwashed by the church into killing witches as he stands in between corpses. He wakes up from his dream to be met by Holt, who invites him to catch fish with them. The children with Hearthful are escorted to the river by Holt, Kudo, Tyrant, and Katie. Katie is surprised that she still trusts the traitor Tyrant. She was also raised in the church, and she betrayed them too. But still, she doesn't trust Tyrant one bit. Gaining trust holds merits and takes time. Holt promises Katie they won't harm him if he doesn't harm powerless people. Katie's stomach starts growling suddenly. A sleeping loss is woken up by Sable, who's brought bread into her room. He serves her tea and then gets to the point. Sable wants to test a potion he made from one of Zero's books, although the writing looks like a dying chicken's last wish. She's surprised Sable can rid this horrendous handwriting. He tells her that his father authored this book. She's surprised to know that he knows about Thirteen as his father. He leaves aside his father's topic and emphasizes the potion. The book tells a method to infuse magic and potions. So he puts the potion onto Ludens, and Ludens takes the test tube from him and drinks it completely. Ludens is happy as Lost says that it provided two mages worth of magic. He promises to return with different kinds of potions for better experimentation. Sable also tells her he likes her because she cares for everyone. He's saying this because Holt told him to tell things he likes about her. She tries to change the topic by bringing it to Holt, but he mentions that her grin gives him goosebumps when she's always there for them. Lost says she will monitor Katie, but Sable says he is at the river with the group. Tyrant has flashbacks of being beaten by his father for making the very traps he ordered him to make. Or maybe he was just an ugly child that's why he was whooped. Later, he became known for his talent for creating heartless traps, showing no mercy towards the target. So, he created traps for a noble to trap criminals released in the forest, but not one could escape from his traps. He received a request to make traps to torment the victims even more. Even the priest acknowledged his talent and told him to die or live a painful life, where he chose the latter. The kids show Tyrant the fish they caught with their hands and not the trap. He asks Hearthful if she's from the north and that she's living in a witch village, although one destroyed her hometown. She only replies that one can't hate the entire population for the crime of one. Tyron says that if her child got hunted, she would hate the profession. But Hearthful only says she will become a hunter to avoid making the same mistake of hunting children. It's the way she was born. Cody is feeling uneasy and is in agony. Holt confronts Tyrant if he has feelings for Hearthful. He can't define it, but the feeling gets him worked up. Holt affirms that he will get well with everyone. Katie gets up and starts walking like a mindless zombie. Suddenly, his abdomen bursts open and his mouth sprouts out, mindlessly chanting that it's hungry. Tyrant jumps in and saves Hearthful but loses an arm in the process. Holt casts a spell and attacks what was once Katie, but it doesn't affect him. Tyrant says that the remnant of disaster affected Katie too. He tells the two to escort the children, but Hearthful takes it upon herself. Puta wants to heal his arm, but Holt tells him to wait. Tyrant feels useless without his weapon, so he stops Katie with his body while Holt reads her Bible long spell. Tyrant is impaled on the back and loses a leg, but Katie is finally sealed. Their happiness is short-lived as the zombie Katie breaks through the stone prison. Tyrant puts his life on the line again to let Holt cast her spell. Holt promised Tyrant that they wouldn't let him die. Pudo sacrifices his tail for Holt to cast Flogas again. Tyrant's stomach is burst open as he lies near death's door. Holt successfully casts Flogas, and the possessed Katie is finally dead. Pudo heals Tyrant's wounds and regrows his limbs with magic. Tyrant tells the two to run away as small as he cannot run himself due to excessive blood loss. Remnants of disaster jump out of the burned corpse. Tyrant immediately tells them to lie face down on the ground, as Loss emerges from behind and eats up the thousands of remnants with Ludens to save the three finally. Holt only feels sadness and anger at Katie's death and the mastermind doing everything. They tell Sable not to feel bad because he could not help, as they don't want to depend on him completely. From a distance, the Dragon Conqueror King appears again and brings news that the three are ordered to return to Weenias before the village turns into a battlefield. The three are confused and curious about this revelation, so they ask Zero about everything. Zero tells them that they cannot risk their lives on a battlefield. Zero orders the three to follow the rules or be expelled. Sable drops out of the academy for the battle, but if he proves useful in battle, he wants to be readmitted for his battle prowess. Zero calls this brave facade a farce. He says that Lost told him that mages cannot assault back at their assaulter. Zero says it is more tedious to disable than kill an army. 
He says that magic potions are a way to do it, and once the potion is perfected with the help of Holt and Kudo and additional information from Tyrant, they will be successful. Zero is only surprised that she might have to graduate him instead of expelling him for this idea. Zero says it's an academy matter, so Loss only threatens to return with his students if they're sent back. She says the village disappearance will hurt no more than a dog bite, but she realizes what she said and cries because she's so damn attached to this place. Zero finally agrees to let them stay and decides to consult with Albus. The loudmouth law speaks high and mighty. That is how she will make a mockery of the enemy. Back at the academy, Albus agrees with their idea. So Albus arranges an audience and decides to tease the advanced army and drive them away. The priest asks Tyrant if it's weird that a former arbiter is facing the church. The priest also heard about his compassionate side from Loss when he protected the children at the river. He claims only to protect his owner since he's her tool, as he has no free will. And if any previous owner comes to use him, Holt will fight them back. Holt tries out Sable's potion and feels completely replenished after using it. He tells Hold and Kudo that he used a book written by his father to make this potion. Hearthful makes Tyrant try the sweets the children make. Later, she finds Tyrant rather distracted and tells him to speak up. He tells her she will regret it, but she accepts that too. So, he tells her he's thinking of a way to make her and the children cry. From how he spoke, Hearthful deduces that maybe he likes her. She calms down the flustered Tyrant as she explains that people tend to think of their loved ones in their moments of destruction to protect them in the best way possible. Tyrant walks out and visits Holt, who asks if he is a tool with no will. She tells him she isn't a big fan of Hearthful. Then he admits that if ordered, he can kill the person he loves the most, so he might as well kill Hearthful. Holt is just playing around with him by mentioning this. She tells him that Sable will require his assistance in making traps. Although she doesn't like that Tyrant is a major part of the plan, she still cannot oppose it. And scum like him can protect people when they are in danger. This philosophy will only lead to more agony for Tyrant, and Holt loves this outcome. The ones feeding these thoughts into Holt's mind are the priest and Loss, as they talk about brainwashing her from the sidelines. They also praise Sable and Kudo for being observant. People started calling him Tyrant Boss during construction because of his decision making and leadership, while Holt asks that they solely target Floggas at enemy equipment. Kudo mentions that it's dangerous enough, instead, they must injure and heal them heavily, but Sable says it might lead to a massacre. Zero mentions adding another method of combined magic. Yaoi hopes the enemies are weak. The priest affirms and tells him that a 10,000 strong force of peasants is coming. Attacking them would make the defenders bad people. Lily calls Yaoi to help her cook. The priest tells her to escape to Lavra Cathedral with the Dragon Conqueror King. She adamantly rejects it and wants to stay to fight and protect the priest. Loss grabs Lily and starts rubbing her face inappropriately like a fatherless person. Damn boy, he's thick! Boy! That's a thick ass boy! The priest saves Lily from this molestation. The priest tells Loss that Lily wants to stay back only because of him. She changes the topic to the remnants of the disaster that affected Katie. She shows him a model of it and says that someone is spreading it like a plague while being fully prepared for the outcomes by having a cure for it already. Loss thinks of going to Latra Cathedral too, along with the villagers. Holdem tells the knight captain at the academy that they will send troops but not fight. Treating people with anti-witch ideology well will lead them to change sides. Farrier requests the church and mage knights to dispatch the magic medic unit since they're marching against Zero's village. After thinking, Farrier writes a letter to Taurus, the head of the Creon Republic, and sends it to Cal. Taurus congratulates Albus for pulling off this chess-like war game in real life. He also tells her that the remnant of disaster problems started with an adventure story-loving noble. The bodies they found had remnants of disaster seeds in them. Torres gives her a seed of the remnant since the noble brought back 500 bodies, thinking they contained the remnants of disaster. Albus immediately orders him to call back the mage commander. She then tells Torres to gather an audience, as she needs to inform Zero about this. Holes and Leos meet with Sable, and Leos promises that he will come back stronger once he's back, while Leos will be a grown-up by then and reunite with his beloved friend. Although this is a rather weird war where one side doesn't want to kill the other, they'll end up killing people if they fail. Sable gets up from the table and, for the sake of protecting everyone's future, reminds Zero of her obligation to do everything in her power to protect them while he provides her magical power. Sable does feel a little lightheaded at the end. Hold and Kudo tell him to be proud of this achievement. Zero tells them if they mess up the war, they're expelled. 
The army marches towards the village full of mighty warriors as Loss vigilantly watches over them. The army marches towards the village, claiming they'll be given the village land if they kill the witch. Suddenly, demonic rats attack the army. They change routes but fall for another trap as blades fly everywhere and their limbs are cut off. It starts raining, and the Green Holy Grail restores their limbs to normal. Etchings pop up, asking if they're startled by this. They realize the power they're against, so the commander retreats as the witches show them mercy. Zero discusses how the student's plan has redirected the foot soldiers. But the Beast Fallen group still advances, with a demon-possessed Beast Fallen among them who can use endless magic without incantation. The priest thinks that one can't fight these forces in small numbers. Yale taunts him, saying he should have left, but he stays back for Lily, who's nowhere to be seen, so out of concern, they both run out for her. Zero marks the start of the battle for the three students. Incidentally, Lily has been caught by the Beast Fallen mercenaries. The demon orders him to take her to the village and eat her before the defenders. Wire suddenly kills the wolf praise the demon, and the same fate ensues for the other mercenaries. Upon Lily's approval, the demon decides to kill her to make the defenders fight harder. The priest jumps out and slices the demon's arm off, sternly saying that one should never wish for death. The demon's wound isn't healing as the priest's weapon carries a witch curse and church consecration. The demon pulls out the affected limb part and regrows a new one. Yaohe makes a mighty entrance, too, by slicing some mercenaries. The demonic beast fallen binds the cut mercenaries together and brings them back to life. The priest orders Lily to hide in the canopy. The priest doesn't like being taken lightly. So, the two start fighting back. Yaohe attacks the demon possessed while the priest fights everyone else. Outside the village wall, many soldiers fall into traps and die. Tyrant, Holt, Sable, and Kudo stand atop the fort. Holt shoots magical projectiles at the soldiers. Zero tells the students that it is crucial to aim carefully. Zero asks them for their next move. The enemy starts rushing towards the defenders again. One escapes Tyrant and moves towards the wall. Sable takes care of him by pulling his arm out. Pudo does not want Sable to touch him now. Holt brings out her trump card and shoots everyone with a precise flog as no incantation. Pudo gets down and heals the injured soldiers. Zero asks the beast fallen about their next move. The earth shakes when Yaohei and the demon possessed clash head on. Pudo calling him an old man frustrates Yaohei. The demon strangles him, but he replies by cutting its arm and piercing its neck. So Yaohei asks Zero for assistance. She orders Yaohei to run out of the wall on her signal and begins chanting the spell. The sky goes dark and green, and after the long Bible spell is complete, she signals Yaohei. They eat away at the demons they possess. Zero only reminds us that an evil mage can destroy the world. From a distance, the crowd, accompanied by Taurus, Albus, and Hold'em, enjoys the fight. As their defeated army finally retreats, Albus might not want it to be every year as per Taurus' request because it costs a fortune. Hold'em feels jealous that Taurus is too close to Albus, while he whispers something into her ear. Suddenly, Albus feels something odd. It's the remnants of a disaster waiting to devour the audience. Albus immediately calls on her commanders and forces to protect everyone. Mage Commander Amner comes forth and prepares to cast Furum on them. The remnants are defected and come out unscathed, only to attack everyone in the audience. Bishop Idiomer orders other bishops to surround him to keep them safe from this problem. He also tells Albus that Zero is willing to kill many people to safeguard her village. He did not do it early because he wanted to believe in the witch's goodness and Albus's abilities. Albus finally reveals her cleverness. She tells Bishop Idiomer that to dispel a curse, one needs to know the name of the enemy demon. So, she asks how he knows the name of that demon that is the source of the remnant of disaster. The remnants of disaster approach this group and start attacking them as well. Although Idiomer has the ward, he's still not safe. Considering it was all created through Ludens to find out the culprit behind it, Loss makes a dramatic entry. Loss approaches Bishop Idea or spouts some random philosophical nonsense, and tells him she will not kill him if he wants to mend his ways. She further says that Idiomer also rigged his peasant soldiers with the relics, as the escapees would turn into monsters, and he could blame it on the witches. Hence, she brings out a remnant seed from Ludens, as her staff didn't eat this one thing found in Katie's stomach. She orders him to eat it. He asks to be spared, but she forces him to swallow the seed. The war is the talk of the town and the village, as a 10,000 strong army is defeated by a mere village with no casualties on either side. Considering they even brought the remnants of disaster. In the Academy of Weenias, Albus summons the three to give them their diplomas. Albus rants to Holden that they have lost their ability to trust because of what they went through, and cries like a baby. 
Hold asks Albus to help them find jobs. Pewda wants to join the church and mage knights, while Sable wants to get into magic research. She tells them she has the perfect job for them. The three returns to the village to gather their things. Zero gives Thirteen's book to Sable as it's his father's memento, and she never manages to decipher it anyway. Sable mentions that, in the end, he wrote it for his brethren, which means Zero herself. He also tells her that replacing the Thirteens in the book with Zeros quickly deciphers it as changing the allotment of each page. She finally says goodbye to her nephew, and he calls her Zero Ant in return. She jokingly hits him on the head and tells the three to take care. The tyrant decides to stay in the village. Lily gives Kuda some food, and she starts crying as if her son is going to work. The priest tells them to get going, he really hates long goodbyes, like an old uncle. Leos angrily tells Sable that he wants to go on an adventure with him. Sable promises that he'll come and get him once Leos is grown up. Pewdo is anxious about their next job. They'll gather and bring information about remnants of disaster from the Forbidden Library, although the mission could prove fatal. Sable is incredibly happy that he is graduating with these two. Pewdo and Holt blush and feel embarrassed as he expresses his love for both of them. Old shouts why he makes her like him even more, even though he will not reciprocate the feelings. His motion sickness strikes again, as this causes another drama within the carriage. Nonetheless, in the end, Sable expresses his wish to see loss once again.